What's going on here? Well, Happy New Year, and welcome to episode 27 of the Let's Play World. So last week I challenged you guys to help me get this channel up to 50 subscribers, and we did add a few, but we didn't quite get there. So, the challenge still stands. If we can get this channel up to 50 subscribers, I'll go fight the Ender Dragon. But all is not lost. I have a great farm design that I came up with, and I'm going to build it today, and I think you guys are really going to like it. Also, I did a lot of work on this space up here. As you can see, I detailed the edges with dark oak, and I added some of the weathering like I did down on the deck downstairs, moved the lights around a little bit, added a light fixture above our table, looks real nice. And I've got some armor stands, and I moved the lights up a little bit so that they're nice and centered. I think it looks really sharp, and it's a really kind of warm space for us to hang out and, and do some stuff in. Lots of room on the walls, and I haven't figured out exactly what I'm going to do with this yet, but I want to do something for you guys, something to recognize the viewers and the community, and yeah, more details to come on that soon. So more about this farm. If you like my cow farm that I built, you're really gonna dig this farm. So we're gonna build it in this space right here and it's going to involve a fair bit of redstone. It won't be a very big build, but it'll be an overly complicated build. A lot like that thing over there. So the footprint for the main part of this farm is gonna be nine by nine. Okay, our collection area is gonna be right here. So I'm just gonna put some temporary blocks there. I'm gonna put some hoppers down here. And then I'm gonna place a bunch of temporary blocks. This farm is going to use a bunch of pistons. And there's going to be a bunch of redstone going on down here. So let me see if I can figure out how in the world to lay all this out. All right, we dug this pretty deep here. I think we should have plenty of room. And then I'm going to place some blocks around the outside of the pistons. And now I just need to work out the redstone. Okay, I think we're getting there. There we go. So all of this is a system so that I can send in an input and these Pistons will fire in a certain sequence. That's all that's going on here is a fancy piston firing system. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to decorate this yet, so I'm going to do some temporary blocks for now so we can move things along and then we'll come back and uh, replace them. And I do have to put one of these right there. I'm curious if any of you have figured out what kind of farm this is yet. All right, got some water running down the back here. I think I'm going to use some purple colors. So I'm going to go with the nether brick up here. And I'm going to put some signs down. And one last ingredient. Well, I need to decorate it still, but this is basically the finished farm. And if you haven't figured it out yet, it's a chicken farm. So let me show you how this thing actually is gonna work. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get some cedar chickens. There's one. There's two. There's three. All right, so those guys are gonna stay in there. They're gonna grow up and they're gonna lay eggs. The eggs are going to get collected in a hopper, which will come down here into a dispenser. When the comparator senses that there's eggs in the dispenser, 
this familiar circuit that I've built three or four times so far will create a clock, which then shoots the eggs out of the dispenser. Now what happens here is the eggs hit this half slab and that breaks them. And there's a chance that a broken egg will create a baby chicken. Now, as you can see, there's water here, but where the half slab is, there's a little bit of air. A baby chicken is one half a block tall. So the babies will just sit here and stand around and do nothing. Now, once a baby grows up, its head will pop into the water, which will force it to swim. The adult chicken will swim up the water stream, come along here, and fall into our holding cell here. Now, every time this circuit fires, it's also going to shoot a signal into this. So every time this gets a signal, it'll shoot one block over into this hopper. Now this hopper is locked, so those will just sit there. They won't flow back. So it's gonna do that 10 times, and I can change this number depending on how frequently I want this to happen. But once all of these blocks move over here, this guy moves over, which will trigger this circuit. The signal will come up into our piston firing system. And when the pistons fire, the three on this side and the three on this side fire first, so it pushes all the chickens into a single file. Then this piston and this piston fire, which pushes them all to the center. And finally, that piston fires, which shoots all the chickens up in the air and cooks them. They then fall back down, picked up by all these hoppers, and will land in the collection system for me to eat. So we just gotta wait for our chickens to grow up first. But um, yeah, I'm pretty excited to see this thing in action. I think this is the look we're gonna go for. This sort of purpley gray sort of situation. We've got a lot of chickens in here now. Now we're getting baby chickens. Once the chickens grow up and get washed in through the water chute, they end up in this upper containment area. And voila, we have cooked chicken. I don't know if it's quite as diabolical as the cow farm, but I just like the idea of the chickens being thrown into the air and, and being cooked by the ceiling and then falling back down. It's just ridiculous. Plus the whole breeding tube over here is, is just over the top as well. So yeah, that is our chicken farm. So that's a, a pretty good use of space, I think. And we have another little green patch over here that I have an idea for, something really, really small. So one of the simplest farms to make is a tall flower farm. With tall flowers, you can take bone meal, and if you bone meal one of these guys, it pops off a couple more of them. So you can set up a little machine to bone meal them over and over, and then you have a really easy way to get more flowers or get dye, things like that. We're gonna set up our little flower farm in this space right in front of the pumpkin farm here. Set up a dispenser for each of them. There's four types of tall flowers. There's peonies, lilacs, sunflowers, and rose bushes. And so we'll have a dispenser for each of them. So I'm gonna build one of these so you guys can see how they work. And then I'm just gonna repeat it a couple of times. So the simplest way I've found is to use observers. So if you put an observer so that it is facing down, so uh, the face is looking at the ground right now, and then put another one of these looking at it. That creates a little clock. So these two observers are just kind of staring at each other. And so one uh, sends a signal and the other one sends a signal back and they just do it over and over and over and over. So then what you can do is grab a sticky piston and if I put a lever on there it'll extend it and then retract it. So what has happened is the sticky piston pulled that away. So now if I flip this lever, starts the clock over again, pull it back, 
breaks the clock. So that way, if I have a bunch of bone meal in here, and I have the flower sitting right in front, just come up, take as many flowers as I want, and then turn it back off. Super simple. And there we have our lilac, our sunflower, our rosebush, and our peony. So I'm going to do some real basic decorating here just to spruce this up just a little bit. And then we'll call it good. So I used the path blocks for the first time as just kind of a little offshoot of our main path. And then I just did a real simple kind of uh, design here using some trapdoors and some slabs. Kind of a mismatched fence thing that I really like. And that's it. That's our tall flower farm. So if ever we need some flowers, we just come over here, flip this, and pick them up. Very cool. There's our little flower farm. Again, just like the chicken farm, a really good use of space. We just had this big kind of green space here, and we were able to slot a, a little farm in there. Still have a ton of space over here, a little space over here, a little space over here. Very, very cool. The last thing I want to do today is I want to make a banner. You know, this place, it has a look. It, this mix of modern and old, all kind of stuck together. And I want to give it a symbol. And I'm kind of future-proofing a little bit. You know, I think one day when we decide to move on and go to another location and build again, there will be a new you know, look and a new feel. And I think this symbol that we could put on a banner would be very representative of the area. And that way, uh, when we look back on it, we can go, oh yeah, I remember that place. There are some really great banner making tools out there if you um, are looking for ideas. There's a website called Planet Minecraft and they have hundreds and thousands of user submitted banners and they show you exactly how to make them. The other thing that's cool is you can go in and you can tweak the individual steps and see what you get. And the banner that I'm going to make today was just a happy accident. I found something that looked kind of dragony, and then when I changed a couple of the steps, it suddenly looked completely different and I just really liked it. So for this banner, we're going to use some white dye. We're going to use some black dye and some cyan dye. And I need to make a flower charge pattern. All right, we're going to start off with a white banner and then we're going to do a black cross. Then we're going to do white across the center. Then we're going to do black and we're going to do the flower charge. Then we're going to do white and we're going to do the inverted chevron. Then white, I'm going to do the border. And then cyan, we're going to do gradient. And there it is. I think it's pretty cool looking. Sort of looks kind of angely, kind of demony. It mixes in a lot of the cyan like we've been uh, using in our base. I think it's just a very cool symbol. Now that we've created our banner, what we can do is duplicate it. We don't have to go through all that again. We just keep one of them, and if we put a blank banner in, then we end up with more than one. So I think this sort of thing would look really good, you know, in our entryway, like that. Right? I just think that adds a little bit of color and interest to the front of the base. We could put it above our chair, up in our throne room. We could put it in the nether so we know which portal we're at. We could even put it outside. Anyways, I think it's a really cool looking banner, but I'm curious what you guys think. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think it looks like. What do you think about it? Well, that's all for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please like and subscribe if you want to follow along on the adventure, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.